So I'm standing in front of some beautiful flowers. I am here with Ellen from Egan Gardens, and we are gonna talk about something that I know occurs, but I had never considered it until this conversation we're gonna have, annuals that pollinate. So tell me about this, and why do you think I didn't think of it? Well, <laughs> the main reason is that these days, annuals don't get no respect, right. and it's not fair. Perennials are all cool. Everybody's even getting tired of them just putting in shrubs. Well, perennials and shrubs and trees are all great bee supporters. Right. And when we speak of pollinators, it's really the bees we're worried about. They've got the problems with the varroa mites killing them off and all that. Right. So we got to at least give them as much food as we can. Now, shrubs bloom in the spring and for about three weeks and they're done. Yeah. Perennials will have their bloom time and they're breeding them for longer bloom times. But, you know, it's anywhere from three to six weeks on most of them. Right, correct. And then there are the annuals and they bloom all the time right. because annuals are programmed by nature to continuously bloom so they can set seed and make new babies for next year because they know that their life is done. Right. So they are just blooming the whole time. So in between all your perennials and shrubs, here are the annuals blooming continuously. Even just a planter or a hanging basket can right. attract bees. I was looking at a hanging basket yesterday and there were bees all right. over the lobelias and bacopas. So you don't have to just have a place for your annuals. You can pop them in between your perennials. A lot of the annuals kind of look like perennials for those who say, <laughs> I don't like annuals. They just look like little cookie cutter things. Yeah. Things like the Nicotiana. Stunning. Yeah, they're, they'll get up taller than this. They bloom clear on into the fall. The bees love them. The hummingbirds come around to visit them. They smell good at night and they just blend right in with your phloxes and your shasta daisies and all those things. And I have to say, I love heliotrope because not only does it pollinate, it butterflies love it. They love to land yeah. on that. Yep. Everybody loves heliotrope. It smells so good. Yes. Yeah. Mm, it's divine. <laughs> so we love it. They love it. God love it. Yeah. And then what is the beautiful red here? Is that a verbena of some sort? That is a verbena. There are the seed grown upright verbenas, cheap and easy. There are the trailing verbenas that are a little fancier. Both of them attract bees and hummingbirds. And radical bloomers. I oh. mean, they just bloom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Um, That's beautiful Even the too. little blue lobelias. Uh, hummingbirds go for these, but yeah, I've seen the bees all over them too. This little guy is a Nemesia Karoo dark blue, related to snapdragons. Snapdragons are great for the bees. Right, yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to like trap them inside so mean. <laughs> anyway. It was the dark side of Ellen, but we love you anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, be sad, isn't it? Uh, and, and then, of course, zinnias produce a lot of pollen. The butterflies love them. The bees love them. And, uh, uh, I, lo I love them. Yeah. And then, of course, these are a yeah, wonder. Yeah, the salvias. Everybody talks about the perennial salvias being great for bees, and they are. Yeah. But, you know, not everybody has room for a hot lips that gets that it's true. big. Yeah. And so if you just need a splash of red and something for the bees, then... And that'll take you through up until fall anyway. Oh, and yeah. then the bees tend to kind of wander away and hide yeah, for a while, so yeah. that's perfect. Well, and you also have an upcoming event, I believe on the 9th, of a, of a class mm -hmm. on pollination itself, right? Yeah, so I'll talk about plants, I'll talk about growing techniques, uh, planting techniques to be the best for the bees, right. and anything anybody has questions about. Well, you know, it's always so much fun to come out here and see all the beautiful color and the plants that you can buy. So if you are thinking to yourself, I would like to learn more about pollination and how I can make it work in my own garden, go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. You can call in, sign up, and make sure that you're here on Saturday the 9th, I believe, right? At 2 p.m. Perfect. Thank yeah. you, Ellen. Thank you.